Okay, so this video is going to be for those of you who are still not convinced. Evolution to you, maybe you're still on the fence. So let's just take you back through some of the stuff we've talked about. Our friend Chucky D, Chaz Darwin, he's come up with some ideas for us. He has said mutation and sexual reproduction leads to some type of genetic variation. If that variation works and it's beneficial to the organism and its population, then it should be selected for by the environment. Survival of the fittest has taken place, and those individuals can now pass on that genetic material to their offspring. This then leads to the evolution of the population and an adapted group that's better suited for their environment. If you combine that evolution and adaptation with something like geographic isolation or anything else that blocks the gene flow between two groups, then we're going to end up with speciation, the creation of brand new species, which is what ultimately leads from simple organisms in the past to the more complex organisms we have today. We've already discussed evidence for this concept by looking at the rocks of planet Earth. The fossil record contained inside of them have given us quite a bit of evidence that support all of these ideas we've been discussing thus far. The rocks, the rocks, they show us fossils. It works. Evolution works. But if you're still not convinced, there's still plenty more that should support our theory of evolution. If you need something more than a dingy old rock to convince you that evolution is something you should probably start believing in, look no further than your own body. We have what's called vestigial structures. Vestigial means we kind of don't use them anymore. It's sort of our evolutionary baggage, so to speak. The appendix is probably the best known example of vestigial structures. It's this little pinky looking thing off the end of your large intestines, and really all it does for us nowadays is maybe host some of the good bacteria in our digestive system, but the only time we ever really recognize it is when we have to pay some surgeon to remove it from our body because it's gotten all swollen and it hurts our tum-tums. Wisdom teeth our mouths unwanted house guests. These again used to be used when we were eating more plant materials and needed to grind them a little bit more before swallowing them. Well, again, we don't really eat that way anymore. Our jaws have kind of shrunk as we've evolved and there's no room for those wisdom teeth to come in like our others do. What they end up doing is busting through your gum line, pushing your teeth all over your mouth and destroying all of that investment your parents placed on orthodontics. Did you know 30% of people actually don't even have wisdom teeth anymore? I wonder if that means they're not as smart either, you know, because they don't have their wisdom teeth. Yeah, that was terrible. Goosebumps. So this was originally a reflex for furry woodland creatures, and what it allowed them to do was lift up the hairs on their backs and their bodies, and what it did was provide insulation when they got chilly. If we get cold, we throw on a sweater. Except for that guy. Wow. Just, wow. Here's another one. Your tailbone, the very end of your vertebrae. It's the remnant of tails which most mammals had throughout evolution. We don't have it anymore, except for when we're developing as embryos. Oh, look at that little guy. Our first baby pictures. Our ear actually has quite a number of vestigial structures going on with it. For one, we can't move them anymore. If you notice in some animals, they sort of direct their ears towards sounds that they hear in their environment. For us, we don't really have that need. Some of us can still use it for things like wiggling our ears, but that's just a foolish party trick that makes us look silly. I'm just kidding. I'm just really jealous because I can't do it myself. Ah, the Plica semilunaris. Yeah, it's basically a freaking third eyelid. We don't have those anymore. It's that little remnant mucous membrane in the corner of your eye. Things like fish and reptiles and some amphibians use a clear version of it to wax over their eyes when they're in the water hunting. We don't do that, and it's really just something that looks kind of gross. And I don't like looking at eyes that closely, so let's move on. Ah, yes, the pinky toe. This is less of a vestige and more of something that's kind of useless. Other than being the little piggy that goes wee 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 all the way home, our foots don't... Nope, that's feet. 
Our feet don't really use them for balance anymore, but it also doesn't make us better not to have them. So it's probably not so much vestigial, which means it isn't really going to disappear. It's kind of in it for the long haul, and the only time you're gonna notice it is when you bang it or get it stepped on, and then it really, really hurts. Aside from our own anatomies having evidence of evolution through structures that we're actually losing, if you compare the structures that we have to the structures of other animals, we can actually see we have quite a bit in common, even though on the outside it may not look that way. What does a human, a frog, a bat, and a whale, and a horse have in common with each other? Well, if you look at our limbs, we have the same bone structure. Our arms and legs actually produce force against some object so that we can move. Whether it's force against the ground, the air, or water, a flipper, a wing, a leg, or an arm all have the same structure where you'll see a long bone up top, two bones in the lower arm, wrist, and some sort of finger bones. This is the result of something called divergent evolution, where a common ancestor ends up splitting into new species. That idea, called speciation, is what's leading to something called homologous structures. Structures that do different things for the organism, but are built a similar way. The opposite of this would be convergent evolution. In this case, you have originally dissimilar species evolving and adapting similar traits and body types as a result of natural selection in a certain type of environment. Examples of this would be organisms that have wings for flight or a streamlined body for swimming. These are called analogous structures. Another really crazy idea is that when we're developing inside of mom, an embryo of a human and an embryo of many other different types of organisms, which you think you have nothing in common with, actually look really eerily similar to each other. Early on, we have many of the same traits, but don't end up showing our outward differences until later in our embryonic development. If you want to get to the most nitty gritty of all evolution evidence, look no further than your DNA. That's right, the recipe that makes you who you are is really, really common amongst lots of different organisms. The fact that all life on the planet uses a DNA molecule to code for the making of their amino acids and proteins is evidence enough. But when you actually look at the sequence of the base pairs of that DNA, you learn this in sixth grade, the adenine, the thymine, the guanine, the cytosine, we actually have lots and lots of it in common with a lot of different things. For example, did you know you have 60% of your DNA in common with a chicken? 80% in common with a cow? 85% in common with a mouse? 90% in common with a cat? Which is probably why when I was studying anatomy in college, we actually dissected cats to take a look at their musculature because it was so similar to that of humans. A whopping 98.6% in common with the chimpanzee and the bonobos. Last but not least, I'll leave you with this note. For all the huffing and puffing that humanity has done about our differences and all of the terrible things that have happened as a result of that, if you were to compare yourself with any other human on planet Earth, you are 99.9% .9 equivalent when it comes to your DNA. That 0.1% well, that's the good stuff. That's what makes us all different and all beautiful. Until next time.